In this video, we are going to do something different. We're going to bring you a very important opinion and we will plead with you to watch this video till the end. Listen, because you will learn something. Why do Nigerians become less religious when they travel abroad? This is a question that we want to discuss and you will learn something from it. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to our channel. So, he says, I asked a friend that traveled abroad when he told me about the decline in his spiritual life. The question I asked is, or oh, is it that they don't allow you pray over there? Tell me. And the guy responded, no, it is not so. You are allowed to pray here in abroad. But when you get there, you will realize that a lot of things that we perceive to be spiritual are not. Okay? So this is the difference between them and we Nigerians. They are a product of failures from government and ourselves. You will meet a system and an ideology that will challenge your be previous beliefs. Imagine that here in Nigeria, you don't pray to fill your gas. You own a house, a car, go to school, or have your children attend one of the best schools. But in Nigeria, sometimes you even pray to have your three square meal a day. The thing tire me, I replied myself. Then he continued, you don't even pray to get a job. There are agencies saddled with that responsibility and they do their best to get you a job in two months. And once you get that job, your life becomes a product of uh, leverage. The one we acknowledge as grace in Nigeria. So leverage abroad is equal to grace in Nigeria. Very, very interesting and instructive. Just keep listening. But this grace doesn't come from above. It comes from the government. Your child can even go to university and graduate without paying a dime. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Free education. Okay, more is coming. As the child begins to walk, the government will gradually deduct his fees from his salary in a way that it won't even affect the child. So basically they go to school on loan, student loan or yeah, not scholarship because scholarship you don't pay back, but on a kind of loan, but when you, you don't pay back until you get a job and you will pay it in a, such a way that it will not affect you. Okay. Under such atmosphere, if it's you, you will change and behave like me. This is the guy that came home from abroad that is talking now. You won't even suspect your uncles. You will not. You will know they have no hand in your failure or success. You see, my village people. The village people mentality is wiped away because you have a job. You have things going for you abroad. You see, I don't suspect my uncles anymore. Wow. In fact, I even call them on phone now. We are closer than before. Life is really a mystery. What do you think of this, please? Can you go to the comment section? Because this is a serious topic. I'm telling you. Very, very interesting. Some, some people have already responded. And uh, I, I bring to you the views of some people. One person said, a traveler is wider, wiser than a gray-haired man. But I will advise you, you know the government we have, do your best and come to this place. You will thank God you did. So he's asking you now to jackpot.
you have to jackpa and then you will thank God. At this instance, I was weak. So our government had made us to hate our uncles like this when we should have loved them. Oh, as I have become an uncle now, tomorrow my nephews and nieces will hate me thinking that I'm responsible for their failures and misfortunes. Oh, wow. When I'm innocent, God forbid, some of our uncles may be dying in silence of their innocency. God will help them. So our government made us pray about every issue of life, no matter how small, and jump from one prayer house to another. It shall not be well with them, I concluded. I think you now understand we ended the call. I was in deep thinking of what to do. Should we leave this country and run away? Japa. No, all of us aren't meant to travel overseas. I mutter these words, but you that read to this point, what do you think? And I tell you, honestly, there's a lot of truth in this. You see, in this Nigeria, we, we, kind of, um, I don't know how to best to put it, in order not to sound insultive, we over, we disturb God too much. We overcall God for everything. Somebody, we, you will ask somebody, have you, are you going to pass the exam? He say, yes, by special grace of God. And he's depending on God's grace, but he has not bought the book he has to read. He has not done his assignment. He did not study. And you're waiting for the grace of God. I usually tell them, don't call God into this. The grace has already been given. And he say, well, I say, yes. Your God already gave you the grace to be able to read, be in school, have the books, have a teacher, have everything. The only thing you need to do is to study and pass. You don't, God's grace is, you're disturbing God. You have everything. Everything is by God's grace. You tell them, uh, drink water. I say, uh, to God be the glory. Okay, that's a praise. Very well. But everything is not, God has put everything in place. Put the government, put the jobs, put the people to run the system. But they mess it up. And then we keep calling God, 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 like if God is wicked or is not answering prayers. God has given us everything. Like he said, going to school in Nigeria, to go to university is a war. After school, to get a job is a war. Will God come and create all the jobs and drag people to school, tell the government what to do? Please go to the comment section and really, really tell us your opinion about this because this is very interesting. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next video.